Okay, so now it's time to have fun. We're going to actually wire up the media element to play the sounds. I'll also do a little cleanup uh, and get the filtering to work by selecting one of the categories to only show those categories in the grid view. So let's go ahead and get started here. And I'm going to open up the main page.xaml. And in here, what I want to do is handle the, um, I think this is it, the list view item click event. Let me make sure that's the correct event handler. So basically when somebody selects one of the items in this um, sound grid view that we created, uh, we want to play the sound that's, that's associated with the image that was clicked on. So actually, this is the event handler that we want. Sound grid view item click. Let me go ahead and um, I think we don't need this one anymore. If we do, we'll, we'll add it back. All right, and so here it's uh, pretty easy stuff. All we need to do is grab the item that was clicked on. And so that'll be given to us here in this item click event args E. And uh, we can just choose the clicked item and then cast that to what we want it, that, what it represents, which is a sound in our application. So I can do something like this, var sound equals clicked item cast it to sound and then we'll set uh, I think it called it my media element dot source and we'll just set it to that sound uh, that sounds audio file property now to do this we actually need to give it a URI if you hover over you can see the source property accepts a URI which is a uniform resource indicator and that's just going to be a location for the file now what we need to do, there's a couple of different ways to go about this. Um, I think the easiest way is just to f specify the base URI that will give us like the root of the project and then we can give it the actual audio file that will contain the slash asset slash audio slash category slash sound. So we'll just do this dot base URI and then um, we'll use the sound dot audio file. All right, and with any luck, this will actually work. So let's see what we've got so far. All right, it's time for the moment of truth. Okay, so it was that easy. Uh, oh, that's all we needed to do to wire everything up. Great. Now, when we ran the application, there were some other issues with layout, with the hamburger navigation. Let's go ahead and fix some of those things because that's really what's holding us back now. Let me take note of a few things, rerunning the application here, and we'll just address them little by little. All right, so you can see here that we've got some issues with each of the, uh, the list view items. Uh, they need to well, the text needs to be moved down a little bit. Uh, if we can move things to the left a bit, that would be helpful because we want them to line up with the hamburger icon. So generally some spacing issues there. Um, as far as these items, they need to be pushed off from the left-hand side a bit because it's just kind of running together here uh, in that upper kind of left-hand corner uh, area. So uh, let's work on those two things right now. Let's go over to the main page.xaml. Now, as far as the media element is concerned, we're going to use it at length for another project, and we're going to learn how to manipulate uh, the sounds and how much of the sound to play, how do we manipulate the volume so that it nicely fades out instead of abruptly ends when we get to an, another project that we're going to work on together. So this is really our first introduction to the, the media element. It can also play videos which I don't think we're going to demonstrate in this series, but if you take a look at the previous series that I created for um, uh, 8.1, so uh, Windows Phone 8.1 Development for Absolute Beginners, I demo how to display video um, using the media element. Okay, so let's go up here to the list view, and what we want to do, first of all, is I'm going to separate some of these on other lines. Mm. 
one of the first things we want to try to do is set a negative margin because I really want that image to move to the left quite a bit. Uh, and we've not talked about negative margins. Let's just try like negative 15 and um, maybe then 10 on the top, 0 on the right, and 10 on the bottom. That should make things a little bit more interesting there. And as far as the text block, I think we need to set the uh, horizontal, I'm sorry, the vertical alignment equal to the center. That should move things down a little bit. Let's see how, what kind of impact that that has. All right, so that definitely moved things over to the left, which is great. And it looks like we've centered the text. That's good too. The last thing that, and I might, hmm, it's a hard call, right? I think what we ultimately need are these icons to be a tiny bit smaller. Uh, and maybe that would fix some of the issues there. So let's back off on this to a minus 10 and then set the height and the width of these just a tiny bit smaller there. And maybe even create a little more um, height and uh, or actually uh, margin between each of the items. The other thing that I want to do now is come over to this um, in the content area. I want to on that whole item, that whole content area, I want to push things out a little bit. So I'm going to set the margin on the left 20 and then I'll just go zeros for the rest of this until I get a chance to look at it a little bit. Let's see what we have there. So you can see that this is a lot of tinkering, just seeing, does that look right? What if we do this? Um, I probably should even make those icons a bit smaller. They're still pretty large. Uh, so let me do that. But I like the spacing here. We might even come down from the top a little bit. So let's make those two adjustments. Let's make the icons a tiny bit smaller. So let's go like 35 and 35 here, I'm gonna reduce that back down to 10. It was just a little bit too much margin on the top and bottom. And then the other thing that I wanted to do was uh, here I'm gonna set, um, yeah, 20. Let's try 20 from the top. That should push that grid down 20 from the top, giving us a little more space there. All right, uh, I feel a little bit better about that. That might be a bit much, but overall, I like where we're going with this. Uh, the next thing I want to do is get the menu uh, actually working so it, it actually filters. So let's let's work on that part right there. And the list view that we have, we're going to accept input from the menu items, list view, item click, uh, event handler, and Here again, what I want to do is grab that event item that was clicked on from the item click event args E. So once again, I'm going to grab the E dot clicked item. I'm going to cast it this time to menu item. Remember that was the class that represent each of the items that we're binding to. And I'll do var uh, menu item equals. There we go. Great. And now what we want to do here is uh, filter on uh, by category. Right. So we'll set the category. I think we have a category text box. No, nah, let's see what we call that. Uh, yeah. Okay, category text block. Let's grab that. Dot text equals then the menu item dot category, and we'll just do a two string on that. That should give us what we need there. Uh, in this point, we want to change our sounds collection. Remember that that is a, a observable collection of sound. And so what we're going to want to do is filter that. So we're going to call the sound manager dot get sounds by category this time, passing in our observable collection of sound and then the sound category. So menu item dot category. All right, so that should give us what we need, what's wrong here? Oh, I see. Yeah, we can't set it equal. Sorry, forgot the, how I how I uh, designed that that method. And um, 
I'm not even sure that we need to do anything else. I think that's just the only thing, two things we need to do. So let's go ahead and try that. So let's say I only want animals, I only want taunts, I only want warnings, I only want cartoons. Awesome. Okay, so that works. Now we want to get the back button to work. Um, the Really the back button should only be displayed whenever we click on one of the items. Um, uh, so really at this point we should say, hey, back button. Go ahead and set your visibility equal to visibility dot visible. Uh, otherwise, it should be set to um, collapsed. All right, when we see all of the items, I think. All right, so let's try that and let's let's see. And, and I may have to adjust that. I've kind of forgotten what I need to do there. Um, but whenever we hit the back button, what we want to do is actually go back to that, uh, to all sounds. So here we'll go um, sound manager dot get all sounds, and we'll just pass in our sounds. And we're going to tell that menu items uh, list view dot selected item equals null, so nothing will be selected then. It'll be just back to its original state. Uh, and that's all we should have to do. So let's see if that actually works. Okay, so all sounds initially. Then we're going to say, hey, give me just the taunts. Notice that the back button showed up. I'm going to hit the back button. I uh, see we have some we have some work to do here. We're not 100%. When we hit the back button. We want to go back to all sounds. So um, and then we would also want to make that back button visibility equals uh, visibility dot collapsed. All right, so let's pay attention to that state one more time here, specifically that back button. Okay, we don't see a back button and we're viewing all sounds. Now we want to go taunts and then I'll hit back button, all sounds. Now we could imp implement this in a more robust way and keep track of of the, um, the various pages that were loaded in and then just call navigation dot uh, go back, but I'm not doing it that way. The back button will just take us back to all sounds. Uh, so it's really just a matter of how you want to implement it. But I feel comfortable with this this approach. Excuse me. <laughs> I actually scared myself to death. Uh, <laughs> I didn't realize I was, was going to make a sound. I forgot. All right. So at any rate, uh, that's exciting stuff, right? We made a lot of progress on this one, and. Uh, I think the next thing we're going to do is add some drag and drop functionality. That will be interesting. So we'll be able to take a sound off of our desktop and drag and drop it in, and then uh, and then hear it, uh, add it, and add it to the list, and then actually hear it. So uh, that'll be a big one. We'll do that in the next lesson. Thanks.